What's up guys, Beyond Sense here with another video. On today's video, I'm gonna bring you another top 10. It's gonna be the best niche fall fragrances. So let's jump right into the video. The first scent, it's a tobacco scent. I'm talking about Serge Luton's Chergui. Chergui, it's a sweet tobacco scent. The most prominent notes here are tobacco, honey, and amber. So honey and amber are quite prominent, so you can see that it's quite sweet. But the most interesting thing in this perfume is the hay note. The hay note brings some uniqueness to this fragrance. As I know, this one is the only tobacco scent with a hay accord. This one has other notes as incense, iris, sandalwood, rose as well. The incense here, it's uh, it's not that strong, it's not an amouage level incense. Through my nose, it's a feminine incense note. Super nice performance, nothing to complain. It lasts over 10 hours on my skin actually, but I do believe it can be a little bit feminine to some men. So take that in consideration. That's my top 10, Shergi. In the position number 9, I have another tobacco scent. This one is a little bit different. Amouage Journeyman. Journeyman, it's basically a peppery tobacco scent. This one doesn't come sweet as pretty much all the other tobacco scents. As I said, it's a peppery tobacco scent, but the incense that it's in here, it's super strong. It's pretty strong in the very first 30 minutes to an hour, but after that it sets down as a super nice and kind of soapy fragrance actually. On my skin it gets a little bit soapier in the dry down after the second hour I would say. I'm not sure, it's probably because of the juniper berries that there are in here. So the most prominent notes here are Szechuan pepper, tobacco leaf and also incense. So these three notes can be quite dense, can be quite strong, so take that in consideration. It's not as strong as Interlude Man, for example, but it's kind of in the same, like, vibe. So that's my ninth pick, Journey Man. In the 80th position, Serge Luton's Ambre Sultan. Ambre Sultan, it's basically an amber scent. It has some sweetness that you can find in pretty much every amber scent, but this one has a specific note that gives some uniqueness to the scent, pretty much similar to the other Serge Luton scents. Actually, there's always one accord, one note that gives some kind of uniqueness to the fragrance. And in this one, the uniqueness comes from the bay leaf note. It is an amber, not that strongly sweet, but the bay leaf gives some herbal vibe to this scent. I wouldn't say that it's an oriental take, but it gives some herbal vibe to this oriental scent. I think that they were aiming to do an oriental scent because there's a lot of resins here, there's a lot of amber. But this bay leaf, it's quite prominent, it's quite strong in this fragrance that makes it a little bit towards to the herbal thing. Most prominent notes here are resins, amber, and bay leaf. So this is a different take on an amber scent, and an oriental amber scent. Number 8, Serge Luton's Ambre Sultan. In the position number 7, Boa de Sea de Victoria's Aiseni. Aiseni, it's one of the most unique scents in my collection because this is a myrrh fragrance. It's not that easy to find a myrrh fragrance. Myrrh, it's easily found in oriental scents, but it's actually difficult to see a myrrh-based fragrance. The most prominent notes here are myrrh, elemi, which is a resin, and cinnamon. This scent is actually super complex. There's a lot of notes. I think that pretty much all the Bodicea de Victoria scents are quite complex. This one has from Fougere notes as Oriental notes. It's a mix of a lot of things, but the concoction itself is divine. Seriously, super, super good. Performance wise, nothing to complain. If you're looking for something a little bit more dense, a little bit more bold to this fall, I think that I said it can be a nice pick for you. Number seven, Bois de Sea de Victoria's Iceni. Number six, Coromandel from Chanel. 
Coromandel, it's like a masterpiece, seriously. This one is super amazing. As pretty much all the other scents that I showed you guys here, this also has a unique scent and especially a unique note. The unique note in this fragrance is the white chocolate note. The white chocolate here is simply amazing. I haven't met a person that actually didn't like this scent until now. This is a super unisex scent. It is an oriental scent, but it's not that dense. It's a gentle scent. Most prominent notes here are patchouli, white chocolate, and benzoin. So if you like something a little bit more subtle, not that strong, not that bold, Coromandel is for you. Position number six, Coromandel. Position number five, Boadicea de Victorias. Ardent. Ardent, it's pretty much a rose and nude combo, but as the other ones, this one also has a unique note. The unique note of this fragrance is beeswax. Not honey, not amber, beeswax. Or of course this one has amber, but beeswax here are kind of a unique note in this fragrance. I've got a lot of rose oud combos, but this one is one of my favorites. Definitely top three. This one, it's Definitely on my top three for sure. This one is a rosewood combo that it's more to the like subtle side of the things. It's not super dense. That's why this one for me is good for the fall, not for the winter. Uh, well, you can wear this one during winter as well, but I think that this one suits to the fall as well, maybe even better. So most prominent notes here, rose, beeswax, and oud, you get other notes as saffron, benzoin, vanilla, patchouli. There's a lot of notes here. A lot of people say that this one reminds Tom Ford's Noir de Noir. Performance, no complaints, over 12 hours on my skin. Position number five, Ardent. Musk Ravager. Musk Ravager, it's pretty much a musk, a wild musk scent. The musk that you find here, it's not that normal or common, like musk that you find in pretty much a lot of scents in the base. This one is super prominent. It's the most prominent note in the fragrance. This one, it's the best musk that you can find. If you like musk, and if you're not afraid of a little bit of animalic musk, most prominent notes here are vanilla musk and cinnamon. Performance is great, a little bit dense. There's also cloves here. If you don't like cloves, please avoid it because the cloves here are quite prominent as well. But I think this one is a must have for every single man because it's the best musk that you can have. Position number four, Musk Ravager. Position number three, Maison Francisco Jean. Grand Soie. Grand Soie, it's a super simple scent. Most prominent notes here are Amber, Cyan, Benzoin, and Vanilla. You also get a little bit of Tonka Bean and Abdenin. This is pretty much an Amber scent. It's a gentle Amber. So if you want something for the day, not for the night in the fall, I recommend this one and Coromandel for your daily basis, like to, in the morning, not to the night because they are not that strong. Depending on the count that you are, of course, that's probably the best amber, one of the best ambers that I have. And I think this one is a nice pick for men and women, not overly sweet. So position number three, Maison Francisco Jean, Grand Soir. Position number two, Creed Viking. Creed Viking is one of the fragrances that I like the most to actually to, to smell from the automizer. I really like this scent. It's one of the best fougeres in the market nowadays. A lot of people say that this one is close to Old Spice. I do get the point, but you can feel the quality here. Some nuances are different. This one is quite spicy as well, but it's a bright spicy scent. It's not a dense and heavy and incense spice scent, for example. This one is all more suitable for the daytime. And the rolls with the cinnamon that you can find here are also super nice. Most prominent notes here are are pink pepper, spice mint, and Calabrian bergamot. As I said, you can also find lavender, cinnamon, rose, vetiver, lemon. This one is a fougere fragrance. Super gentlemanly, does not project like crazy, but it's over there. It has its own bubble. It gives you that bubble that it's super nice. This fragrance got a lot of hate, 
when it got released because of the comparison with Old Spice, which is a super cheap scent. But once you actually get it, once you try it on your skin, you see the difference. You see that this one is a perfume. Old Spice is a disodorant. This one is one of the best daytime fall scents. Position number two, Creed Viking. And position number one, Amoa Jubilation 25. A lot of people will say that this one, it's a winter fragrance. However, for me in Korea, this one, it, it can be actually both. It can be a fall and winter scent. This one is not as heavy as other winter fragrances. So I will say that this one is probably one of the best, if not the best, fall scent. With prominent notes of blackberry, opopanax, and oud, Jubilation 25, it's a concoction that takes you to the Middle East. At first, you may think it's super heavy, but once you apply it on your skin, it actually sets down more freshly, a little bit more gentlemanly, not that strong. You get this blackberry, you get this dried fruits, like you feel some dried fruits coming out of this scent. It may be the mix of myrrh, honey and the blackberry. This is my favorite oriental, my favorite scent overall. Every time I go out at night, I will wear it for sure. So my first pick in this top 10 best niche fall fragrances is Jubilation 25. Okay, this is it for this list, guys. What do you think about my list? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and leave a like to this video. It helps the channel to grow. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram as well, beyond.sense. I wish you guys well, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.